So in this video, we're going to be calculating random uncertainty. Now, in order to explain that, I'm going to show you this experiment. So in the experiment, you're trying to find the time taken for a trolley to pass from one light gate to the next. Now, in case you didn't know, these are the light gates. And of course, the light gates you can see there are connected to a timer. So the timer is going to display the time it takes, as I said, for the trolley to pass from the first light gate to the second, because of course the trolley has a card attached to it and that card breaks the light beam. Starts the timer when it breaks the first, stops the timer when it breaks the second light gate beam. Now, let's get that trolley started right now. And the first time that runs, it takes 1.18 seconds for the trolley to move from the first to the second light gate. Let's do exactly the same experiment. So we'll try to get the trolley to the same starting position and let it go again. But this time we get a slightly different time. Now, it could be any number of reasons why that happened. It could be that the trolley struck the bottom of the slope and slightly moved the slope to the right. It could be that we maybe didn't start the trolley from exactly the same position. Who knows? But for some reason, it's taken a different time. So let's see. If the experiment was repeated, so five different times and we got five different values, 1.18, 1.22, 1.18, 1.19, 1.23 seconds, we might get a question where we're asked to calculate the mean value of those times and also the random uncertainty. So random uncertainty is something you'll be asked or you might be asked to work out, work out if we have repeated values. So to work out the mean value, all we have to do is use this equation here. So the mean is just the sum of all the values divided by the number of values. And we obviously have five different times. So we're going to use that equation to start with. And let's see, we'll say the mean, which is obviously another word for average, is just 1.18 plus 1.22 plus 1.18 plus 1.19 plus 1.23 and as I said we have five different values so divide by five and our mean will be 1.18 in fact I'll work this out in brackets so 1.18 plus 1.22 I would suggest you do the same as well enter these numbers in brackets plus 1.19 plus 1.23, close brackets, divided by 5, and that gives us 6 over 5, which is 1.2. Now, the important thing is that those values are written to three significant figures, so I'm going to write the mean to three significant figures as well. So that's 1.20, and of course it's a time, so it's in seconds. Now, let's see, press this button again. Remember we were asked to work at the random uncertainty in these values as well. Well, the last equation that we saw in order to work out the mean, that's not given in the relationship sheet, but this equation is. So it's actually written in two different forms as well. So it's either written as, in fact, it's both written as random uncertainty is equal to max value minus min value divided by number of values. But I think this only started for this year's paper, 2023 paper. It's also written in this form. That delta R is R max minus R min divided by N. I'm going to go back to that one. Prefer that one. So to work out that random uncertainty in these values, in these times, so we'll see. We'll move that up a little bit. Like so, just to give us a little bit more space. So I'll see random uncertainty. In time... And I should really write that equation first. So if you're doing this, of course, in an exam, you'd write that equation as it's written at the top of the screen first. So imagine I've written that, and then I would write the values. Now, what is the maximum value out of those five? It's 1.23, is it not? And the minimum value is, well, I've got two of them, 1.18. But 1.18 is the smallest value. And of course, we've had five different values. So that means that the random uncertainty in time is going to be, and again, I'm going to place the top line in brackets, 1.23 minus 1.18 divided by 5, which is, press this D button, 0 
0, 1 seconds. So can I get all of that in? Yes, I can. That basically answers both parts of the question. So this is the mean value, 1.20 seconds, and this is the random uncertainty in time, 0 0.01. Now, sometimes you might be asked to combine those two if we were asked to work at the mean and the associated random uncertainty. So that would, of course, mean that time would be... So time t would be 1.20 plus or minus 0 0.01 seconds, if we're combining the two. If, obviously, if we were asked a question, maybe part A to find the mean and part B to find the random uncertainty, and then what we did at the start would have been fine. So let's get past this part. As I said, this is another method or another way that this equation can be writ written. But go to the next slide. Now, what I have here, this random uncertainty, is in its what's called absolute form. So it's also an absolute uncertainty. What that means is the uncertainty itself is measured in seconds, as is the mean value. So 1.2 is the mean value of time in seconds, and this uncertainty, random uncertainty, is also written in seconds. So they have the same unit. And that means that this, as I said, this random uncertainty is an absolute uncertainty. But if I wanted to convert it from this form, an absolute uncertainty, to a percentage uncertainty, then I would need to use this equation. So percentage uncertainty is the absolute uncertainty divided by the measurement times 100. Now, you wouldn't do this unless you were asked in a question. So as I said before, if you were asked to work at the mean value, you'd use this method, and that gives you the mean value of the time. If you were asked to work at the random uncertainty in time, you use this method. As we said, the largest minus smallest divided by the number of readings. If you're asked to combine those two, then you would write this. But if it's asking you to work this out as a percentage uncertainty, then we need to use the equation, which is now shown at the top. So that would mean that time, let's see. So time, in fact, we'll write percentage uncertainty in time. is equal to, now the equation says that we take the absolute uncertainty, that's with this value here, 0 0.01, and we divide it by the measurement, which is this, the mean value. So that would give us 0 0.01 divided by the mean value, 1.20, but we also multiply by 100, and that would give us, move that up slightly, let's see, 0 0.01 divided by 1.2, is equal to, I could have worked that in brackets, I'll multiply by 100. And that will, when I press SD, give us 0 0.83. So that would give us 0.8%. I'll just write that to one significant figure. You can see that this is a recurring decimal as well, 0 0.833333 per hour. Now, as I said, it really depends on the question you're being asked whether you have to work out to the uncertainty in this form, the absolute uncertainty. For random uncertainties, of course, using the equation for random uncertainty, you will always uh, get this from the equation. You will always get the random uncertainty in its absolute form. But if you're then asked to work at the percentage uncertainty, then, of course, you need to use the equation, as I said, at the top, and that'll give us 0.8%. So we could say... If we're writing that random uncertainty in its absolute form, we would say that time is 1.20 plus or minus 0 0.01. But if we had to write it as a percentage, we would say that time t is equal to 1.20. Now we'd have to write the units at this point. So 1.20 seconds plus or minus 0.8%. And there we have it. So hopefully this has all made sense. Really, the, the main thing you want to do yourself is to try some of the questions. So that's why in the next slide, I have recommended three questions to try yourself on random uncertainties. And then, of course, you can look at the marking scheme to see if you're getting those right. If you're not, maybe you want a little bit more support, you can come back and look at this video. Maybe you can ask a question in the comments in, uh, section. So I would suggest you look at the 2015 paper. That's question number one. That's the multiple choice section. Question number 14, you could have a look at the 2016 paper from paper 2, the written section, question 2a. And you could try from the 2021 paper, paper number 2, question 10a. So 
that's us for now. Hopefully this, as I said, has been useful. If it has, give it a thumbs up. Anyway, we'll see you later.